Hello Year 6. Yet again we're going to start with idioms. We have spur of the moment, time flies, like clockwork and make good time. I'll leave you to just read through the meaning of these and again see how you can use these in your everyday life. Okay, our spellings for today are aggressive and exaggerate. Again, two double G's, so you've got your double consonants. Remember, we'll be doing just a spelling check on Friday of the words we're learning in the morning. This is quite informal, and I don't want anybody to stress about this, please. And then moving on. Okay, so on to our next lesson. This was when we're going to be able to write a factual paragraph. So using related, topic related vocabulary, give details to support my research and to use a variety of sentences, simple, compound and complex. Just in case you've forgotten, I've given you an example of all three. So a simple sentence is, has one main verb. For example, the trench was narrow, the main verb being was. Compound sentences, we have two main clauses. The soldiers did not enjoy living in the trenches. It was cold and muddy. I'll give you a little hint there. You could put as instead of the semicolon. Complex sentence, a main clause and a subordinate clause. Even though the soldiers were exhausted, they found it difficult to sleep. OK, using your research to write your report. You should have finished your introduction yesterday and be ready to write the best of your report. First, look at your subheadings. Can you order them so that the writing will flow? For example, are two subheadings related to each other? If so, they should follow one from each other. Each other. Do you think one of your subheadings should definitely be first or last? If so, reorder them now so that you are clear and that your writing flows. using your research to write your report. So here we've got one subheading with four paragraphs. This is similar to what I'd like you to do. So for example, you've got your subheading at the top here. This um, paragraph here is information about the structure of the fam most famous py py pyramid, sorry, and when it was built. So where are the most famous pyramids? And this is just about the most famous pyramid and when it was built. This short paragraph here is about information showing that boats were included in the complex of pyramids. This paragraph here, information about the pyramid for the pharaoh's son. And the last paragraph is a brief summary about the most famous pyramids. OK, using your research to write your report. Using your second planning sheet, you should be able to use your research to write a detailed, detailed report. Your separating will be first, and then you will then use these three circles for one paragraph, these three circles for paragraph two, and so on, and so on. So this is my planning from the research I put on. So we've got why were the trenches dug out? This was my subheading. Okay, my um, evidence was to protect the soldiers from being shot and from poisonous gas. More time to put the gas masks on. So why were trenches dug out? Back in ancient times, trenches had been used in warfare, but never to the scale that they were used in World War One. During the first Battle of the Marne, the September 1914, Allied forces managed to push the Germans back. To ensure they did not lose their ground, they dug in and later dug deeper trenches as they could not break through the Germans' line of defence. This was supposed to be a temporary strategy, however it was a main feature of the war for the next four years. The main purpose of these long, narrow holes was to protect soldiers. Wars had moved on from the 19th century. Soldiers in World War I had to be protected against modern weaponry such as machine guns and heavy artillery. 
During World War I, the Germans manufactured a poisonous gas, mustard gas. This gas was used in the battlefields. It blistered the skin, eyes and the lungs. The use of this chemical caused panic throughout the troops. To defend themselves for the, from the gas, soldiers were given gas masks. Being in the trenches gave them more time to put these gas masks on. As you can see, my three elements here were put into my paragraph here, here and here. This is an idea about how you could begin your information and your report for each paragraph. So this is just one part. I would expect at least five sentences per paragraph. Okay then. Your job now. Order your subheadings so your writing flows. Write at least three detailed paragraphs for each subheading because you should have fact one, fact two and fact three. So you should have three paragraphs. If possible, write up your information for two subheadings today. The lesson will continue tomorrow where you can write up your third and fourth subheading. Take your time, ensure you are using year six punctuation, colons, brackets and semicolons. Ensure you are using varied sentence structure, as I said earlier, about simple, compound and complex sentences. Rehearse the structure of your sentence before you write. Say it out loud. Think about front of the verbials. Can you read your sentences? And also, where could you put your relative clauses? Hopefully, the lessons that we did last week, you should also already have a few ideas about how you can use your relative clauses. OK, enjoy your lesson and good luck. Remember to send your work to us on our Year 6 email. Thank you.